We are providing online one-to-one -one PTE coaching with authentic practice material. After enrolling in our PTE courses, you will get continuous material updates for next six months. For more information, visit our website, careercoves.com or WhatsApp us on given numbers. Mosquitoes are an unpleasant fact of summer, but 2012 has been especially bad for running into these irritating insects because some carry West Nile virus, and they're known to have infected some 2,000 people in 48 states this year. At least 87 people have died from the infection, which can cause swelling in the brain. Almost half the cases have been in Texas, and to lower risk of infection, some areas have taken extreme measures, including aerial pesticide spraying. But people can take some simple measures on their own to reduce their risk. In an essay in Annals of Internal Medicine, public health experts make recommendations. First, simply avoid areas likely to have mosquitoes. And if you can't or don't want to stay indoors, wear long clothes that cover your skin and use insect repellent. Eliminating standing water, such as that pooled in puddles or unused containers, can also help reduce mosquito breeding grounds and populations overall. Stopping the mosquito spread helps in the long run, which is what we have to deal with, because scientists say that West Nile virus is, unfortunately, here to stay. Being physically active has numerous benefits. Now a study has looked closely at the effects of fitness in the midlife years for preventing debilitating chronic diseases later. The ongoing study gathered fitness stats for more than 18,000 adults and followed their health status into old age. Assessing 40 years of that data, the analysis finds that those who had higher fitness levels in their 30s, 40s, and 50s were substantially less likely to have a chronic condition between the ages of 70 and 85. The findings are in the archives of internal medicine. Physical fitness seemed to stave off heart disease and heart failure, which might not be a big surprise, but it also reduced rates of diabetes, kidney disease, and even Alzheimer's disease. Current recommendations suggest adults make time for at least 20 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day, such as fast walking, jogging, biking, or swimming. Busy middle-aged people might find it especially hard to make time for such exercise, but a small investment looks like it could pay big health dividends for decades to come. Here's one way bats might get their next meal, by eavesdropping on flies having sex. Bats eat a lot of seemingly undetectable flies. To find out how the winged mammals find the insects, researchers set up a video camera inside a cow shed that was home to a bat colony and lots of bugs. The video showed that bats rely on their echolocation skills to detect flies at a specific time, when they're engaged in rather noisy sex. Flies are usually quiet in bat territory and sit on cluttered ceilings in caves, where background noise masks the echoes from their movement. 
But when flies are feeling frisky, males can't help but flutter their wings, emitting a burst of click sounds that the bats pick up on. During more than 1,000 sexual encounters caught in the act on video, 5% of the insects were caught in the act by bats. The research is published in the journal Current Biology. The study shows that ignorance can be safer than carnal knowledge when predators are on the prowl. What we're bringing for our users is basically an immersive experience of a huge portion of the NASA Kennedy Space Center facility. Ryan Failer, project manager of Google Street View. In honor of the center's 50th anniversary, Street View is adding more than 6,000 images of the Space Center, the starting point for Apollo and space shuttle missions. So you can go into the facility, you can go into some of the large areas there like the vehicle assembly building, you can go down to the launch pad and actually go up several floors of the launch pad and see where the astronauts would walk and where they would go as they were boarding the shuttle. The shuttle is now a thing of the past, but someday Kennedy will host a new generation of spacecraft. So when we were there, we actually got to take a snapshot of these structures and these systems in place you know, before all those transitions happened, right? And many of those facilities are going to be decommissioned or converted to different uses. Um, so, it, you know, uh, the opportunity to kind of capture that moment in Street View and preserve it, make it accessible to people around the world is, is I think, really valuable and important. The Chukchi Sea lies between Alaska and Russia just north of the Bering Strait. Shell Oil hopes to begin drilling in these Arctic waters in the next few days, if the U.S. government grants permission. The ship Noble Discoverer will drill two exploratory wells to determine what, if any, hydrocarbons are beneath the seabed and how well drilling equipment can withstand the rigors of the far north. Those rigors include everything from swirling currents and floating ice chunks to migrating whales. There's coral there, too. Scientists sent to the region by Greenpeace have found sea raspberry, a soft, deep-sea species. Other such deep-sea corals bore the brunt of BP's catastrophic blowout in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. It remains to be seen whether offshore drilling in the Arctic can be any safer than drilling in balmier waters. Already, Russia spills some 30 million barrels of oil in the Arctic each year, and that's on land. Regardless, burning oil is one of the primary causes of climate change. Such global warming has thawed the Arctic above all, opening access to yet more oil. Humanity's thirst for oil has yet to gauge its own depths.
Birds face many man-made mortal threats. Windows, cats, habitat destruction, even climate change. And now there's poison in their bird seed. You see, the Scots miracle Grow company had been in the habit of applying banned pesticides to its wild bird food products. In particular, the company applied a chemical known as Storside 2 to its bird food, despite a warning label for that product that reads, quote, Storside 2 is extremely toxic to fish and toxic to birds and other wildlife. Why add a compound toxic to birds, to food meant to be eaten by birds? Because Scott didn't want bugs infesting its bird food during storage. By the time Scott stopped adding the pesticide in March 2008, the company had sold some 70 million bags of adulterated bird food. The company also submitted false documents to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, distributed pesticides with misleading labels, and distributed illegal pesticides. As a result, the EPA slapped the company with a $12.5 million in criminal fines and civil penalties. So when you put out new bird seed this winter, at least you won't be inadvertently poisoning any chirpers. Oh, and keep those cats inside, too. Our Milky Way galaxy has two large satellite galaxies orbiting it. They're known as the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. And humans have been aware of the existence of these celestial objects for at least a millennium. Recently, researchers were curious about whether our configuration is fairly typical or an astronomical anomaly. In other words, is our corner of the cosmos ordinary? Now a new study finds that the Milky Way and its companion galaxies are an unusual combination, but they're not one of a kind. Astronomers in the UK and Australia looked at thousands of galaxies to try to find an analog of our arrangement. The search turned up two close replicas, each with a Milky Way-like galaxy, accompanied by two galaxies comparable to the Magellanic Clouds. But the researchers also concluded that such arrangements are pretty rare. Only half a percent of Milky Way-like galaxies have companions like ours. The Magellanic Clouds may be transitory features. In a few billion years, the Milky Way may absorb them completely. So someday, our corner of the cosmos could be pretty ordinary after all. The eyes are the windows to the soul. As such, they can reveal if someone is lying, right? Cop shows, advice shows, even some organizational training courses hold that if somebody looks up and to the right, they're probably lying. Up and to the left means they're telling the truth. Now a study says that there is no connection between eye movement and lying. The work is in the journal Public Library of Science 1. Researchers tested eye movement and honesty in multiple ways. For example, they tracked the eye movements of subjects who were lying or telling the truth about things they had recently done. There was no correlation between lying and eye direction. The researchers also closely analyzed 52 archived news videos of real people making a public plea for the safe return of a missing relative. In half the videos, the plea was sincere, but in half there was strong evidence that the speaker was involved in the crime. Again, no eye movement clue was evident. So when judging the honesty of a speaker, remember, the eyes do not have it.
You might picture Neanderthals as cavemen gnawing on bones around a campfire, which wouldn't be inaccurate. But Neanderthals may have also dined on roasted vegetables and known a bit about medicinal plants, too. So says a study in the journal Naturwissenschaften, The Science of Nature. Researchers analyzed hardened dental plaque from five Neanderthals found in El Cedrone Cave in northern Spain. Yes, 50,000-year-old dental plaque. And they found a lot lurking between the teeth, like evidence of nuts, grasses, and green veggies, chemical traces of wood smoke, and tiny, intact starch granules, proof Neanderthals ate their carbs. In one individual, they detected compounds from the medicinal herbs chamomile and yarrow. The herbs have no nutritional value, and since Neanderthals did have the gene to detect the herbs' bitter taste, the researchers speculate that the cave dwellers were munching on them not as food, but to self-medicate. Not too far-fetched, they say, because primates like chimps also use medicinal plants. Luckily for the scientists doing this detective work, Neanderthals may have known a thing or two about medicine, but they didn't get regular checkups at the dentist. You just bought peanut butter. You chose the jar because, well, you've always eaten the crunchy variety. In reality, however, something else may have influenced your choice. The product you picked was centrally located on the store shelves. Researchers tracked the eye movements of 67 subjects as they scanned a 3 by 3 matrix of fictitious brands. The tracking found that consumers tend to focus on objects in the middle, specifically five seconds before they made their choice. And they did this for all kinds of products, from vitamins to online movies. Also, subjects continued to go for the centrally located brand, even if the product was not in the middle of their specific visual field. So it's not in reference to one's view. It is literally about the product being central within the entire shelf layout. Past studies have shown that people tend to make a lot of choices based on central locations, like choosing the middle bathroom stall in a public washroom, a middle seat at a table, or even the middle items in a series of arbitrary objects. The test consumers had no conscious awareness that they had chosen centrally located brands. Makes you wonder what you've taken home without realizing why. Ronald Cotton went to prison for rape. The victim picked him from a lineup, convinced she was accurate. She picked him again, years later, when his case was reopened. This second lineup included the actual rapist. After 11 years behind bars, Cotton was later exonerated by DNA evidence. Experts say that the current lineup format pressures witnesses to identify a suspect even when they lack confidence. So researchers are trying to improve the accuracy of such identifications. One recent study had more than 900 participants watch a short film of a staged crime. Up to a week after watching the film, the viewers looked at photos of suspects one at a time and rated how confident they were about each one's guilt. Half of the participants could take as long as they wanted to look at the photos. The other half had to decide within a few seconds. And this fast group was up to 66% more accurate. The study is in the Journal of Psychological Science. 
Strong memories are accessed more quickly than weak memories, which may explain why choosing fast tends to mean choosing right. Another factor that's putting the standard police lineup itself on trial. This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Christy Nicholson. Got a minute? One day the banana is perfect. Bright yellow, firm, flavorful. But even within that same day, brown spots can appear on your perfectly ripe banana. And its flesh turns mushy. And it's destined for the compost or, at best, banana bread. But scientists are developing a way to extend the life of ripe bananas. It's a spray-on coating made from chitosan, a substance found in crab and shrimp shells. The new gel can be sprayed on bananas to slow the ripening process by up to 12 days. Like other fruit, bananas remain alive after being picked, and they actually continue to respire. This means that they take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The more the banana breathes, the faster it ripens, and then rots. Bananas ripen more quickly than most fruit because they don't naturally slow the respiration after being picked. In fact, it speeds up, causing bananas to become mushy. Chitosan not only kills the bacteria on banana skin that then leads to rot, it also significantly slows down the respiration in the first place. So bananas won't drive you bananas. Thanks for the minute. For Scientific American's 60 Second Science, I'm Christy Nicholson. It's a dirty job, but two NASA spacecraft are ready to do it. On August 23rd, NASA plans to launch two spacecraft into the radiation belts around Earth. The twin radiation belt storm probes will investigate high-energy particles held in place by Earth's magnetic field. Those fast-moving protons and electrons form two bands, known as the Van Allen radiation belts, after physicist James Van Allen, who discovered them in 1958. The two NASA probes will study how the belts formed and what makes them swell up from time to time. The outer radiation belt in particular can change quickly in response to the sun's outbursts of charged particles, also known as solar storms. The Van Allen belts are a nuisance to some spacecraft, and they could pose a hazard to future manned missions as well. But the radiation belt storm probes will call those harsh environs home. The spacecraft will fly through the belts for two years, measuring charged particles, plasma waves, and magnetic fields in Earth's vicinity. NASA hopes that the mission will help illuminate the complex physics of the stormy near-Earth environment, and perhaps help future spacecraft weather that storm.
In electronics, there's an understanding that silicon and other elements are responsible for bringing our gadgets to life, while plastic serves as the supporting structure. But what if that plastic could be both the brains and the brawn? Better yet, what if plastic was pliable enough to form all sorts of wearable electronics and even implantable medical devices? In fact, electronics made from conductive plastic have been in the works for at least a decade. One of the difficulties has been overcoming a loss of conductivity when plastic electronics are stretched too far. A team of researchers from the U.S., South Korea, and China say they have found a way to keep an electrical connection even after stretching their specially made plastic more than four times its normal size. The key, make a highly porous polymer and then fill those pores with liquid metal. Imagine these 3D stretchable conductors being used to make artificial eyes that restore vision or synthetic skin that monitors blood glucose levels. A bit out there, I know, but science has a knack for catching up with science fiction. Vaccines are desperately needed in the developing world. Even when they're available and inexpensive, they're still a major problem. Most vaccines need to be refrigerated. Reaching the relevant populations often means traveling to areas where electricity and refrigeration are spotty at best. Nearly half of the vaccine doses around the world are lost to the heat. Also, the cost of refrigeration contributes to about 80% of the cost of the vaccines. So silk experts at Tufts University have come up with a potential solution in case the vaccines in silk protein. Silk proteins contain nanoscale pockets that can hold and protect biological compounds. Inside the silk protein wrap, the compounds stay biologically stable. In the lab, they were able to stabilize the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine for more than six months at a variety of tropical temperatures. The technology also worked with antibiotics. Stored at a month at temperatures reaching 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the antibiotics kept their potency. The research is in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. If the lab results hold up out in the world, the silk safeguard could save billions of dollars and millions of lives. Thanks for watching this video. For more updates by Career Coves, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.